I'm MC Toon. So I was just at the Flat Earth Global Convention in Texas, and I saw Rob Skiba when I was there. Look at this picture of him that I took. Now, unfortunately, I was busy talking to somebody, and that was the only time I saw him, but I was going to ask him to sign my official Rob Skiba certified and sanctioned Flat Earth map, well, cylinder map, because it's because of his, uh, you know, his, his, uh, well, he see my old video. I'll put a link in the description. He thinks the world's a cylinder and it's flat somehow at the same time. Anyway, so Rob, um, Rob thinks that uh, he can fool people by lying to them about what words mean in Hebrew. It's not like there aren't millions of native Hebrew speakers. So I asked a friend of mine, Neriel, who is born and raised in Israel and speaks Hebrew as his first language, what NASA really meant, and sent him a video of Rob Skiba talking about what he thought NASA meant or what he thought he could convince people NASA meant. Have a look. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Flare for Week. This episode is in English because it was pre-ordered by my friend MC Toon, and it's basically for those who don't speak Hebrew. One of the key members in the Flat Earth cult is Mr. Rob Skiba, and this guy is very dangerous because he assumes that he knows enough Hebrew to talk about it and convince people that don't understand it. And if you ask yourselves what qualifies me to tackle this topic, the answer is that I'm a native Hebrew speaker and quite fluent in the Old Testament as well. So without further ado, let's begin. So, you know, that gets me thinking, well, can we trust NASA? Yes, we can. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, has contributed more to humanity than what all of you flurfs together can ever do. Well, you know, it doesn't take very much research to realize, you know, the, the origins of NASA. You know, start with Project Paperclip. They brought a bunch of Nazis over. You guys like the Nazis? Think they were pretty cool? No, the United States just said, hey, let's hire them and put them in charge of a whole bunch of, you know, stuff. As a Jew and a grandson of Holocaust survivors, I have mixed feelings about this action. But at the end, this operation redirected the knowledge from the Nazi machine to a better use, and instead of wasting good materials, the Americans converted it to good purposes. Sounds logical and reasonable enough to me. By the way, the Canadians and the Russians did something similar. And the Fourth Reich continued in the United States. They're the founders. And you got other people like Jack Parsons, L. Ron Hubbard, you know, Luciferian occultists out there doing ceremonial sex magic, an area that became now known as Area 51. As I said in Chapter 11, which was about you, and I have a feeling that it was not coincidental, good actions of horrible men don't automatically mean that the actions are horrible. You know, he's a, Jack Parsons, the founder of Jet Propulsion Laboratory. So that's the origin of our space program. That is irrelevant information. Uh, if you look at the word NASA in Hebrew, that's really interesting too. There is no such word in Hebrew, period. There are several words that are pronounced NASA. For those of you that find interest in this, I will put them in the description. Now, I took Hebrew 101 twice, so that gives you an indication of my aptitude for learning <laughs> Hebrew. And I speak Hebrew 99.9% .9 of my time. That can give you an indication about my understanding. But I did learn a few things along the way. And one of them is like, I don't know if you can see it in the picture there, but there's a, the middle letter in Hebrew there is a shin. and has a little dot over the right side of it. When the dot is over the right side, it's pronounced with a sh sound. When the dot is over the left side, it's with a s sound. So if you do know these letters are different, why are you mixing them? You see, this kind of nonsense is what people fall for, and you conmen know it far too well. Okay, the first time it shows up, it shows up with the sh sound as nasha. Not nasha, nasha. There is no such a verb in Hebrew that is pronounced nasha. 
In addition, nasha is the root of the verb, the singular, past, third body, male form of it, and it has no appearance in the scriptures, not even once. And that is the scripture that I pointed out at the beginning of this second session. The serpent beguiled me. The word beguiled there means to greatly deceive. That's the word NASA. What people will do to convince themselves that everyone is lying to them. So as I said, NASA is not a word. And if you want to go in that path anyway, this verb is not news anymore. Most Hebrew speakers won't even recognize it due to the fact that modern Hebrew use other words for this meaning. First time. <laughs> and who deceived Eve? A serpent. Well, that's interesting. Beguiled, okay, it just, that, that's where it shows up. Translated, uh, uh, Nakash, uh, translated as serpent. And look at the logo for NASA. <laughs> Maybe it's just a big coincidence, right? Don't be silly. <laughs> you can trust us. Now that was with the, the sh sound, nasha. So if it all with sh sound, how did you manage to build such a tower on the wrong word? Ha, huh, Rob? You see, people like me will expose your eyes wherever we can find them, because, unfortunately, the gullible fall for that horseshit. And when it's with the, the, uh, on the um, left side there, it's, uh, it has the meaning to bear or to lift up. And also to marry, to carry, and if you write it a little differently but still sounds the same, it means to travel by vehicle. And the first time it shows up is in Genesis 4.13, where Cain says his punishment is more than he can bear. How interesting the context in which both first appear. Nasha in reference to Eve being deceived by the serpent, and Nasa in reference to Cain's punishment after killing his brother Abel. Very interesting indeed. But you see, Mr. Skiba, s and sh are not the same. The only property they have in common is the numerical value 300. There are several more roots in Hebrew that the only difference between them are that one is with shin and the other with sin, and they have completely different meaning. Like garish, mean crops, and geres, that is the past participle form of grind. For those of you who want some more, link in the description. And some of you have seen my other research and things like that where I'll point to a chart like this that shows the Hebrew letters and the corresponding numerical value and the meanings of the individual letters and stuff like that. The Hebrew word for NASA has a numerical weight of 351. The numerical value is called gematria, and in general it has no strict meanings. There are a few types of gematria, and if you search for long enough you can find a reference to almost anything. Basically, what you said means nothing. So also do the Hebrew words, or the Hebrew phrases, out of man and of your country or land. The phrase out of man comes from Genesis 2.23, out of man where Eve was taken out of man, and out of your country in Genesis 12.1 where Abraham is told to leave his country. And also until evening, count, and many more. In fact, there are nearly a thousand words or phrases in the Bible that have the numerical weight of 351. So with all of this in mind, we end up with an interesting meaning. Out of men of your land, they are lifted up to greatly deceive. <laughs> you know, these people are Kabbalists. Kabbalists? Really? These guys are a bunch of Gentiles. Most of the American astronauts were Christian, excluding Elon Ramon and Judith Resnick, which I know were Jewish. Oh, look, I paused your video in 333. That must mean something. They study the occult. They, they, they love to hide stuff in plain sight. Is it just a coincidence that this is the Hebrew meaning of the word NASA? Highly possible. Considering the fact that most of them don't understand Hebrew, I'm pretty sure there is no hidden meaning to the names. In fact, prior to NASA, the organization name was NACA, N-A-C-A, National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. Now we have it as a, 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 an acronym, right? National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Yeah, I'm going to suggest, looking at their occult background, it probably has multiple meanings. Or maybe not. 
And the Hebrew sheds some interesting light on it. Of course, the scriptures talk about in the Ten Commandments, right? The first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Oh, so what does NASA do? Names all their mission after gods. <laughs> Mercury, the messenger of the gods, right? Followed by Gemini. You got more stuff going on there. And then, of course, we have Apollo. What does this have to do with the space program? Just because they named the missions over some deities of a dead culture, this means that they are all pagans. All of you conspirators need to grow up. The sooner the better. The rest of it is not relevant to this topic, so this video won't cover it. If you want me to do the rest, then please like, subscribe, and leave a comment about it. Thanks to MC Tune that convinced me to do this. I was, as always, Round Tinker, and see you in the next video. Bad world. Bad world. Thank you, Nereal, or as you see there, Round Thinker in uh, on YouTube. I'll put a link to his channel in the description if you're interested in some uh, Hebrew or Israeli uh, information. Uh, most of his other videos are in Hebrew. It's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, so we see there that Rob Skiba knew that uh, the SH sound in nasha means to deceive, and the S sound as in nasa, or maybe nasa, means to lift up or has several other meanings that don't mean to deceive. So, Rob, were you intentionally mixing that up to fool people or to deceive people? Um, don't know. But uh, you did seem to understand the difference in your own video, yet you still tried to conclude that NASA means what it doesn't mean. So, Rob, um, you should try to be a little more honest there next time. Well, thanks a lot for joining me, and a special thanks to Nereal from Israel for that excellent breakdown of the Hebrew word nasha or nasa and the differences between them. We'll see you next time.